Hey everybody, welcome to another Yukon Bob video, In the Truck again. I seem to start a lot of these videos from In the Truck. It seems to be kind of a, a good place just to set the scene while I'm driving up to whatever location I'm going to. Check out the traffic on the other side over there on the 400 series highway going north. Almost bumper to bumper coming into the city. Oops, the camera just tilted there. Coming into the city this morning. I'm heading out of the city as per usual against the traffic, which was kind of nice. Heading up to uh, Lauderdale Point this morning. We're going to ride the uh, Trent Severn Waterway out of Sparrow Lake, and we're going to ride it all the way from there over to Port Severn, which is the last lock on the Trent Severn Waterway system before it enters Georgian Bay again. Two locks to go through today. Um, I haven't been out a, a ton. It's just been kind of windy in my area over the last while, uh, blowing quite a bit. Uh, even wind warnings some days, uh, a lot of branches down, stuff like that. Just not stuff that's great and conducive to uh, sea doing. But today looks not bad. We're going to have a little wind, but the good thing about today is that we're on the Trans Severn Waterway, which is not big lake stuff. It's the, the, the waterway, the canal. So you can be on that and have uh, a little more wind, just changing lanes here and have a little more wind. So it's an hour and a half from my place. Be up there shortly with the Sea-Doo Tours riding group today. We'll see you at Lauderdale Point in just a little bit and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> hey, yeah. We're gonna haul a little bit of gas with us today because we think we can do this on one tank of gas and maybe another five, seven liters on top of that. So we'll bring a little gas. Four hours of power washing yesterday. <laughs> That's what happens when you got a lot of stuff. You got to power wash everything once a year. <laughs> well, when you come by, we'll see what we got to do. Hey, Art, good to see you. How are you? This is the classic, right? The old, the old, the old scene here, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I finally got the new one. I got about four hours on it. That's about it right now. You ever sell the I finally sold it. Yep, yeah. sold uh, about five days ago, but it took three weeks to sell it. So things have slowed up a little bit in terms of, yeah, I think, price of gas and just the economy in general has changed things a bit. Yeah. Okay. This is the nice thing when you've got a group of people. Somebody can back your truck in. You can just sit on the sea dew and uh, back it on in. And then I just have to start it up and I can drive it right off. Good. At least the parking here is pretty good. There's lots of room for sea dews to park. I think here it's now about $30 to launch and park your vehicle. And I think they even make you pay tax on top of that. So we're gonna find that out in just a sec. I'll just get right in here, slide in. That should be good. I think it's 30, isn't it? It's 33.90. That's with the tax, eh? That's it. Okay. So you're in and, in and out? In and out, same day. So 33.90 is what it costs here for in and out at the Lauderdale. Uh, this is the only place I know that charges tax on the, on the launch, but uh, 33.90. And there's a, you get a thing for your vehicle. You put that in your vehicle and then you just park in the parking lot. If you come, if you come early, you, you don't get charged time. How early is early? Uh, before 8.30. Oh, okay. Out there, so. Yeah. Did you, did you understand that if you're here before 8.30 in the morning, there is no tax? I didn't quite understand that. But if you're here after 8.30, you do pay tax. You want tax. I was here at the... <laughs> Is that what they said? Yeah. Get out. Yeah, if you are not open yet. You just take an envelope and put your cash, 30 bucks cash. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, so if you do get here early, you just drop the cash and then you don't have oh, to we pay the tax. I don't know. Right at okay, I got a camera running on here that I got to get turned off. Right there. Well, it's a beautiful morning to uh, to start off with. Maybe a little bit of wind. Not that bad, but we don't have much in the way of uh, big lakes to deal with today. All we have to deal with is uh, Sparrow Lake. We get across Sparrow Lake, then we're into the Trent Severn Waterway and down towards the other end of the Trent Severn Waterway before we get to our final destination, there's a big area called the Gloucester Pool that we'll have to, uh, to go across. But that's about it. The rest is sort of uh, the Trent Severn Waterway, which is why you can do this kind of trip when the wind's up a little bit more than you might normally 
think would be good to go out in. Actually, we did pretty good today. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, seven or eight machines, and we all got in the water and launched and ready to go within a half an hour. So all, all of this group is experienced. They all know what they're doing, and uh, it didn't take all that long. Plus, when you've got extra help to help launch your vehicle and then pull it back out while you tie up the sea that all helps as well. So, yeah, it's an experienced riding group, and everybody's been out quite a bit. There's our two leaders, Greg and Andrew. Okay, proper count now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and me, that makes six. So I was off by one or two. So there's six machines out today. That's at the start. Let's hope they're all coming back. No reason they shouldn't be. And that's Art. This is Art's first time, I think, out this year. First time with the Sea Dew Tours riding group this year, anyway. He comes out uh, on several of the trips, but I think it's his first one this year. That's Phil there. Phil drives all the way from Sarnia to be with us on this ride. That's a four and a half, four hours, 15 minutes or so just to get to where we start from. So he has a really long day. Then he has to drive that back. So he has eight and a half hours of driving to do in one day, never mind all this time on the Sea Dew. That's a pretty long day. That's pretty dedicated. So that's basically the end of Sparrow Lake. It only takes like five, seven minutes to get down to the end of the lake and then you're into the uh, Trent Severn waterway system, which is what we're heading into now. You can see how it narrows in here. trestle. I think there's uh, two of them we go under. This is the first one. Lots of windows in that place. Great view. Even the bunkie up top has got a great view. This is a really pretty ride. I just really like this uh, part of the Trent Severn system. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's really scenic. And when it gets narrow with all this granite rock and the little cabins tucked right in along the shoreline, really nice. Look at that one up there. They've done a great job with the steps, just kind of heading up to it. Got a boat on a roller system there so they can pull it out. The Adirondack chairs up in the corner. Looks like an outdoor shower there as well. And right over here, I've shown this before in other videos, there's a rope swing. Hydro Glen rope swing. Comes right off of here. <laughs> I've shown this in past videos when I've come through here. There's a ladder, you can climb up on the ladder, you pull the rope up, swing off the rope and into the water. Kind of cool. Up, oh, they're taking off on me again. So on this trip today, there's going to be uh, two sets of uh, locks we're going to have to go through. This is the first one. This is the Swift Rapids lock. And then we're going to have to go through the Big Chute Marine Railway lock, which is really a unique lock. And if you haven't seen that in some of my past videos, I'll show it to you today. It's really kind of, kind of unique. You know, there's nothing else quite like it. So this is the first one. This is a standard lock, but this is a deep drop. There's a big drop in this lock to get down to the lower level. And uh, gonna have to buy a lock pass. Uh, I haven't got one of those yet. I think I'll buy a 
I think it's a six day. And uh, with a six day pass, if you use it more than three times, three days, you break even on the cost of buying single passes. So that's sort of the theory. So I'm gonna come in here, get tied up, and then go in and buy a lock pass with Chiz from the office just up there. I think some of the other guys are probably also gonna be doing that as well today. This is the entrance to the lock right here. I should be able to just step off on this little ladder. There. Oh, am I locked in here? Oh, sh oh yeah, there's a gate here. Okay. For a second, I thought I was gonna have to go all the way back around. So here is the extent of the drop. Here's the wall right here. And then from all the sea dews parked right up there, here's the drop, how far down you gotta go. It's dark down there, so I'm not sure you can make that out, but that's a pretty substantial drop. And then you come out down on this side, you can get a better sense of it here. Look at all that foam. We're gonna have to go through all that crap. Ah. Maybe we can ask them to move all the foam before we go through it. Same thing, six day please. They're behind there, but we can't see them. It's kind of a reflective glass. You don't want to touch that wall with your clothing on the way down or with your hand, because it's really, really slimy. And you'll get it all over. Look here, it's slimy, yeah. Look at all this stuff. I haven't seen that in past years. Maybe it's just the time of the year or something. So that's the uh, Swift Rapids lock. We have one more lock to go, which is the Big Chute Marine. That's up a little ways. And that's quite a unique lock. We'll show you that when we get up to it. And I need to change the battery. <laughs> so here's that uh, tunnel that goes underneath the road. And the trick with this is, I've done this a number of times, but I'm not gonna do it today in this new machine. Uh, see, Andrew's actually going fairly slow through there. You can go through there a lot faster, but you gotta make sure that there's no wake from the machine in front of you when you go through there, because it'll get you bouncing around inside there, and you could hit the walls. Once I hit a wall, kind of bounced off it a little bit. But uh, it just ends right up there. It doesn't really go anywhere. So today, the machine is too new. <laughs> there are no scratches yet. I'm not gonna go up there today. We'll let Andrew go. This is the, uh, the big chute marine uh, lock, and there's the system right there. You drive your boat right up on top of that, and that takes you right over the road, which is just up there, and then takes you back down the other side and deposits you back down the other side. You're gonna get a closer look at that once we actually get on it and head down across the, the, the way. So it's just making a passage down now. I think I've lost the other guys for a moment or two. I think they went down to another bay but uh, they know that I know my way here, so they'll find me here eventually. And uh, we'll all go across together. But it's gotta go all the way down now to the other side. 
and then come all the way back up this way. So it's going to be a little while before we can actually get on that. Okay, let's put the drone up in the air. I had about 20 minutes to play around until the other guys uh, eventually found me and showed up at the Big Shoot Marine Lock. And uh, once they got there, they sort of got assembled, and I had a chance then to take the drone and actually fly it up over top of the Big Shoot Marine Railway. Here you can see some of the boats in the, in the actual lock. Those are pretty big boats. They sit on those yellow things, which are just sort of straps or, or bands that go underneath the boat so that they don't tilt and tip over. Unlike the sea dews which just drive up onto the wood and then just tilt over. The boats sit on those uh, straps. And then it takes you up over this road. There's uh, railroad, railroad crossing signs that come down on either side. And then the boat drops you back down into the water on this side. So now it was our turn to take the sea dews and get ready to head into the lock. Hi guys, good morning. Look, so that's what happens. As soon as it starts to pull out of the water, the machine tips over on about a 45 degree angle and you're out of the water. So they tell me it's a 58 foot drop from the top side down to the bottom side, 58 feet. It's not the biggest drop in the Trent Severn, but it is the most unique. Okay, we're coming back into the water and uh, as the water gets a little higher and this thing gets more and more into the water, all these sea dews are just going to float again. We're just going to power off of here. Great day for it. Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Have a great day. See you later. So there we go the Big Chute Marine Railway Lock. <laughs> Very cool. I've been through there maybe six or seven times now. And every time I go through, I'm always impressed by it. It's just really kind of unique, kind of different. So these guys now, they're heading in and they're gonna go back over the other way up to the higher water level. They don't fool around here, you just get off and the next ones are getting on. That's a lot of water coming out of there. I think that's the most water I've ever seen. They must have a lot of the spillways open right now at this time of the year to kind of get the lakes and uh, the canals in the level that they want. But well, that's a lot of water coming down there right now. Have you ever seen that much water? No. Is this a game of who can get closer? <laughs> yeah, watch that new machine. You don't want to scratch it right yet. <laughs> And then there's those guys way back there. So this is the bottom end of our uh, journey today. This is uh, the Port Severn area. This is also the last lock in the Trent Severn waterway system. The first lock being at Trenton 
Ontario, just off of Lake Ontario, and this is the last lock before you head back out onto uh, Georgian Bay. So if you go through this lock, you're then out onto Georgian Bay. We're not going to do this lock. This is uh, just where we're going to have lunch, right down here in Port Severn. Some location down here. I'm not sure where we're going, but uh, a reservation apparently has been made, and we'll find it in a sec. Two 350 horse Mercury's on the back of that. And I think I've got fuel problems. <laughs> I'd hate to see his fuel bill. I've been here before. Yeah? Yeah. We've eat, we, we ate here last year, two years ago. I can't remember, but yeah, I have been here. Look at this. They're all set up for us and everything. Yes. What? <laughs> they must have known we were coming. Oh, here comes that banquet burger. Yeah. Yes, thank you. You're welcome, guys. Finished? Yeah. Well, we've had lunch now, and we are going to make our way back uh, in the reverse direction, back towards where we launched from on Sparrow Lake. Didn't take too long to get up here. It was about uh, two and a half hours or so to get up here. Lunch for about an hour and a half, another couple hours back, and uh, that'll put us back at, uh, at uh, Lauderdale Marina. Wind's picking up just a little bit. Gloucester Bay is going to be a little bumpy, I think, going across that. But then after that, once we're into the, uh, the Trans Severin, it'll be okay through there. Guys, thanks very much for coming along on another Yukon Bob video. Just a quick one today. This is a ride I've done several times before. First time, though, on the new Sea Dew, the 2022. Still getting used to this thing a little bit. I don't have all that navigation stuff down completely yet. Still kind of finding my way around the. Uh, the, the control panel, and I've still been using my phone, the Navionics phone. It'll take a little while, and on days like today when you're riding with the group, there just isn't time for fooling around too much, so other days I'll have to do that on my own. Thanks, guys, for coming along on this Yukon Bob video. We will see you guys on the next one. Till then, stay safe out there in the water. Thanks for watching.